Bowsy sure is a hungry girl. And notice how she goes right for those grapes. Boy, she loves those grapes, doesn't she? And here she is going after her second love of her life, silkworms. Now, bearded dragons are omnivores, so they eat a combination of vegetables, meats, and fruits. And, of course, taking some time to drink from her lagoon. And welcome to another episode of Bowsy's Vlogs. Sonic Blue here with my pet bearded dragon, Bowsy. You've gotten to know Bowsy real well now so far from Bowsy's Vlogs. And now I'm going to introduce you to the uh, many different types of foods that bearded dragons can eat. I'm also going to tell you which foods to stay away from if you own a bearded dragon. For instance, bearded dragons absolutely adore their greens, uh, especially adult ones. Baby ones, juveniles, they love their meats. They love their crickets. Mealworms are okay to feed on, on an occasion, just not too many of them because of their very tough exoskeleton. They don't have much uh, in the ways of nutrients, so it's mostly just, you know, crunchy exoskeleton is what they're going to get out of those. But an occasional mealworm is fine. Yeah, you remember those mealworms, don't you? Yeah, she's, she's gaping. She's smiling. She knows she's going on camera. See? Say hi to everyone. You want to say hi before we begin? Well, you were gaping up a storm yesterday. You started gaping up at me. Or, oh, I see. You just want you just want your sights on daddy. Yes, you do. Uh-huh. See, every time I turn away, every time I turn her away, her gaping goes away. But when I bring you back to look at daddy, you seem to smile. Yeah. You got that pretty little smile. This is one very happy bearded dragon. And I do everything I can to take good care of her, uh, especially with the foods that I select for her to eat. And uh, you can have a healthy and happy bearded dragon, just about as happy as Bowsy here, by selecting the right foods, and uh, you can give them the, the types of foods that they absolutely adore. Uh, as juveniles, you want to give them more crickets than anything. Uh, you want to try to give them their greens, get them introduced to it. If they won't eat their greens, try to feed them by hand. Always remember, if you're going to feed them crickets, always dust them with calcium dust. Uh, that, that gives them a, a, a good dose of their daily calcium intake. Because if juveniles, especially babies, uh, don't eat enough calcium, then they can easily develop what is known as metabolic bone disorder, or MBD. Yeah, that wouldn't be very good if they developed that. Aw, look at how Bowsy is happy. <laughs> She's a perfect distraction, let me tell you. Look how happy she is. Look how happy. That is one happy bearded dragon, folks, right here. She is just happy, gazing, and gaping, very alert. If they get enough calcium, especially as babies, and they grow up to be nice and strong, they'll get into their vegetables, and, and the vegetables will already have plenty of calcium in it. Uh, but it never hurts to give them at least a little bit more. And I always dust her super worms with calcium dust as well. Now, some of the greens. Now, as babies, ju um, juveniles and babies especially, and bearded dragons, they'll usually eat more meats than vegetables. She sees herself. <laughs> she is staring at herself, let me tell you. She sees herself right there. You want to get a closer look? See? There's a bowsy. <laughs> Oh, Bowsy, you're such a happy little girl. But um, but I digress. Got to get on with your blog. So uh, if you got some crickets, um, you definitely want to feed them crickets that are sizable enough for where they can get their mouth around it. You definitely don't want to feed them uh, big crickets, especially if they're babies. And the perfect way to measure their food is never give them food that is bigger than the space between their eyes. Uh, that's a perfect form of measurement. Uh, if it's bigger than the space between their eyes, don't give it to them. Because then they'll have problems digesting it. Uh, it might cause some severe internal damages. And you don't want that either. Uh, now, as babies, like I said, they're going to eat a lot more meats than they do vegetables. But when they get to be about into their adult years, they'll start to change their diet from meats to vegetables and getting a mix of both. That only works in most bearded dragons. Bowsy still loves her meats more than anything else. She is a meat eater. She'll sometimes eat veggies, but it's once in a while. Um, 
But um, a lot of people ask me this question too, like, hey, Sonic Blue, I can't get my bearded dragon to eat anything. It's not, it's just sitting there. It's not eating anything. I'm trying to feed it. It doesn't touch its food. And for days, weeks, she's not been eating or he's not been eating or it's not been eating. What do I do? Best thing to do is just keep, uh, you know, keep providing the food for them. Keep providing the food. And if you have to feed them by hand, you know, in case they do eat from your hand, because a lot of them do that. Uh, and if they still don't eat, then it's probably because their bearded dragon is in brumation season. And when they're in brumation or hibernation, uh, they tend to eat a lot less. Oh, hi, Miss Gapers. <laughs> and um, basically what will happen is bearded dragons will go for months without food, especially in brumation. When they're in brumation, they're in their sleep schedule. They're, they're basically, you know, sleeping or hibernating for, as you know, well, winter typically. But she usually goes through brumation in the spring, which is really weird. But um, lizards born in captivity won't know the difference between spring and summer or winter or fall. And they've been born in captivity. They never really experienced the desert life. So they really don't know when to brumate. Uh, she brumates in the spring, so maybe most of you... Uh, uh, adjust the temperature accordingly for spring, winter, but she's she's got like a hundred degree weather in that uh, terrarium all year round. Um, and then she goes to the cooler part of the terrarium, which is always set at 85 degrees. Um, well, I should take that back. There's a spot in there for 85, and then there's a spot that's 80 that's just above her log, and that's where she likes to hang out a lot. But uh, anyhow, bearded dragons, when they eat, uh, you really have to make sure that uh, they get the best foods. You don't want to get them anything that's going to, you know, cause their digestive system to go out of whack. And you, they, you, do, you, know, you definitely want to stay away from certain foods, such as iceberg lettuce. Definitely want to stay away from that because it contains no nutrients. It's mostly made up of water. They can't benefit from it. And it doesn't do very well with their internal ingestion system. Uh, same thing goes with spinach. Spinach, if they get a hold of some spinach, it's okay to give them just a teeny bit, but don't overdo it, and don't never give them too much spinach. If you give them just a little pinch of it, it's okay. It's not going to kill them, but don't give them, don't make spinach a staple green for them. There are other greens that they love just as much as you would. Uh, collard greens being the number one staple for bearded dragons. Uh, plenty of calcium, high in nutrients. Um, some of them love the heck out of it. Uh, another green to go with is mustard greens, and that's a little less in nutrients, but still uh, rich in calcium. They love the heck out of that stuff. Dandelion greens is another good staple, and uh, turnip greens are also good. And then we get into our lettuces. They can eat romaine lettuce, but anything dealing with lettuce, try not to give them too much of. Uh, romaine lettuce is okay if you have if that's all you have and you don't have anything else then it's okay to give them that for maybe a day or two or maybe three but don't make it a main staple um, if you want a leafy lettuce type of green that's gonna last a while escarole escarole is probably by far the best leafy green to feed them that'll last a while it'll keep a while in the refrigerator um, and then you have endive, which is um, uh, another good staple as well. It's really healthy in calcium and all the other nutrients and vitamins. But you definitely want to stay away from iceberg lettuce or anything else in the lettuce family, except for romaine is okay. Red leaf lettuce is okay too, but treat it as you would with romaine. Um, now I get to tell you about some certain spe uh, specific foods made for bearded dragons in mind, such as omnivore mix. An omnivore mix is made by the folks at Zilla, which uh, they also make a lot of uh, reptile equipment and accessories. Uh, they also make foods. One of the foods that Bowsy loves is omnivore mix. Uh, if you have a bearded dragon and you want to give them a mix of vegetable and meats, omnivore mix is a good way to go. Everything's freeze-dried. It contains all of the ingredients that bearded dragons love, including okra, peas, carrots, uh, bok choy, and um, silkworms, which is her absolute favorite worm in the whole world. She loves silkworms. Every time I give her omnivore mix on a bed of leafy greens, she will pick 
all of the silkworms out of the bowl first before she goes after anything else. Like I said, she loves her meats and sometimes she'll eat her vegetables. Um, her favorite vegetable, carrots. Uh, she loves eating her carrots. They come already prepared in the omnivore mix, but if you want to feed them fresh carrots, uh, you have to give the you have to really cut it up really finely to where it's easy for them to digest. Omnivore mix already has the free dried freeze dried carrots in it, so if you get the omnivore mix, you don't have to worry about preparing carrots and uh, all the other stuff they need. When your bearded dragon reaches to be about a year old, it's probably best to get them started on superworm. Start them off with the smaller ones first. Uh, as for bearded dragon babies and juveniles, instead of mealworms, give them waxworms. Waxworms are much softer, they have much higher nutrients uh, than mealworms, and uh, you don't have to worry about you know, their exoskeleton possibly giving them impaction. So that's definitely something to consider. And waxworms can be found in any pet store. Um, and uh, it's always best when you have waxworms, keep them refrigerated. You know, by all circumstances, keep them refrigerated. You definitely don't want to let them, leave them sitting out because the room temperature will kill them. Um, they could easily, you know, transmogrify into other insects that you don't want in your house. Same thing with superworms. Superworms you don't have to refrigerate, mealworms you do. But it's really weird. Both species of worm will eventually turn into a beetle. Uh, and uh, basically what you're feeding them is the beetle larvae. Some of the treats that you can give your bearded dragons, you can treat your bearded dragons to certain foods too, but just make sure you don't make them an, uh, a, an, a staple all the time. Bearded Dragons, especially Bowsy, loves grapes. She adores grapes. Every time I put a grape, uh, I usually cut it up first too, but when I put some grapes in her food bowl, she jumps right off and goes right for them. She like gravitates to it. It's like a, it's like a magnetic pull. Uh, another good fruit uh, to give them would be strawberries and kiwi. Uh, if you're going to give them any kind of fruit, though, do make sure that you remove all the seeds from anything you give them, whether it's vegetables, fruit. Uh, if you give them strawberries, make sure you don't give them the outer skin where the, where the seeds are because they can choke on them. Uh, if they accumulate too much, it could cause impaction because seeds don't really get digested through their system. If you can give them, because I know the seeds in a kiwi is very, very tiny, and it shouldn't be too much cause for alarm, but if you can somehow extract the seeds from the kiwi, as many as you can, before you feed it to them, that would be good too. Other melons that you can feed them too, such as uh, cantaloupe. They can eat little pieces of cantaloupe, just don't feed it to, and like any fruit, don't feed it to them very often. Just feed it to them maybe once every other week, you know, as a nice treat to give them. Uh, what they really adore though, all bearded dragons, I've never seen one that never turned any any of this down, but bearded dragons adore mango. Bowsy loved a mango, and uh, she, uh, she just tears into mango. She loves it. Like any practice, cut it up into fine pieces that they can eat it easily, and uh, they just adore the heck out of mango. <laughs> Do you remember that time? That you, the last time you had mango, you had it all over your face. I fed B Bowsy her first mango when she was uh, when she was growing up. I mean, she's had mango a few times uh, after that, but the first time she had mango, it was so priceless. She did not know what that was, but she knew she loved it. She smelled it, she tasted the air around it. You know, she did the thing with her tongue, and then once she identified what it was, she took a taste of it, and she just tore right into that mango and she had it all over her face i mean she came away looking like a like a typical one-year-old on their birthday with a you know chocolate cake all over their face you know that's what bowsy kind of looked like in her first taste of mango i had to sit there with a wet cloth and literally wipe her mouth and her face clean of mango uh and if your bearded dragon's a messy eater, you definitely want to keep a moist cloth handy in case they're messy eaters, because you don't want the food to dry onto their scales. Um, you definitely want to keep these little guys clean, um, and uh, make sure they get their, uh, you know, their regular baths. It prevents uh, parasites. Um, you never know when, if your bearded dragon is uh, susceptible to receiving parasites. And Bowsy's never had a problem with that. 
and I always give her baths and uh, when I don't give her baths I miss her so she's always getting hydrated at some point. Other foods that you can feed them, uh, I think I've gone over most of it. They can eat blackberries uh, and raspberries, but again, make sure that anything with seeds in it, you remove it right out. Vegetables, they can eat okra, just make sure no seeds. Um, and butternut squash, they love butternut squash. Butternut squash in particular, as opposed to other squashes, but butternut squash is definitely number one on the list. Uh, if you can find it, though, cut it up into very, very small pieces, and uh, they just love the heck out of it. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I think I've covered all the, all the necessary grounds for feeding your bearded dragon, keeping them happy and healthy. Uh, and I even shared a little anecdote with the mango. Another anecdote that we had, too. I remember this, Bowsy. Remember when you were little and I had you in front of your cricket uh, cricket keeper where all your crickets were? See, she never knew where all those crickets were coming from that I would feed her every day. And when she was little, she uh, she was I was holding her and she got out onto the table. She jumped onto the table and she happened by the cricket keeper. And she looked into that cricket keeper and she started scratching at the glass and she wanted in on those crickets. I mean, she was looking at them, picking out which ones she wanted. Her hand just kept going like this. And then she started doing the glass surfing thing with both of her hands. And you really wanted. So what I did was I, I said, okay, Bowsy, if you're still hungry, I'll give you more crickets. So I put her back in her terrarium. And uh, I think I gave her about five more crickets, which she ate right up. Yeah. And that was later on in the afternoon, too. You're not used to eating in the afternoon, aren't you? No, it's either in the morning or the evening. Now... Contrary to popular beliefs, a lot of people will say that beer, baby bearded dragons especially uh, will always need to eat a certain amount of crickets uh, each day. That's actually not really true. Bearded dragons don't have a set amount of food or a set uh, weight of food to be uh, appropriate for the bearded dragon. Bearded dragons are individual creatures just like you or me. Some are good eaters, some are not good eaters. Um, the rule of thumb here is to feed them enough food that will get them through, you know, as much as they can eat. If they can't eat any more, don't force them to eat any more. A lot of people will say the bearded dragons, especially babies, can eat 25 crickets a day on average. On average, maybe, but some of them, maybe they only eat 20 a day. Maybe they only eat 15 a day. It depends on how much your bearded dragon can eat. And that's what you should base your decisions on. Not by listening to other people's bearded dragons, but listen, but watch the activity on your bearded dragon specifically. Uh, if they can eat 15, give them 15 a day. If they can eat 25, give them 25 a day. But uh, the way I used to do it is um, I used to take 10 crickets um, in the morning, uh, about eight to 10 crickets. It depends on how many she wanted to eat. If I noticed that she was eating only like, say, 16 crickets a day, I would only give her eight in the morning and eight in the after, or eight in the evening. And then anything that was left uneaten, uh, I'd, I'd give it about 30 minutes, and if they're still in there, then I'd take them out and put them back in the cricket keeper. Um, but uh, yeah, she got up to about 18, 16 to 18 crickets per day. And that's that's about as uh, much as she, she was able to eat on crickets. Um, and then she started losing her taste on crickets altogether and got introduced to uh, superworms. And uh, then she started really getting into them. Uh, and when Bowsy was a baby, too, she, she used to not like omnivore mix. Like, she used to turn her nose up at it every time it was in her food bowl. She would not go near it if it was in there. And wow, how the tables have turned, because now you love the stuff. I mean, you absolutely rip right through the stuff. I mean, you're busy picking out silkworms and then going after the carrots and then maybe a piece of okra. And then I know you go after the bok choy because I know you love your bok choy. Bok choy is also a good, um, a good green to give them too. I forgot to mention earlier. Bok choy is a Chinese cabbage that you can find in many Asian markets and may, maybe even your local grocery store will have bok choy as well. Uh, Omnivore Mix does have pieces of bok choy in it. So if you happen to get omnivore mix for your bearded dragon <laughs> it'll have all that stuff in there it has peas it has okra and all that stuff all that stuff but Bowsy still goes for her silkworms and sometimes all she does is eat meat that's it um so she still loves her meats she never really outgrew her love for meats 
and that's another individualized thing about bearded dragons. Uh, some of them, they love their meats. Some of them will go to vegetables and love them. Some of them won't even touch meats. It depends on what your bearded dragon likes and what your bearded dragon is, uh, uh, what they prefer to eat. Um, but just think of a bearded dragon as about the same type of personality that you yourself would have. Uh, I mean, you have a choice whether or not you like certain things, and so do bearded dragons. Uh, bearded dragons, some of them are good eaters, and some of them are not good eaters. But you, you know your bearded dragon, and you know how much food you can that you can give them. And a lot of people say, well, should I still put out my bearded dragon's food when they're in brumation? Yes, definitely do that. Um, if, if, if they sleep a lot more often than they are awake, still put the food out for them because you never know if they get hungry during their brumation and they might want to come over and eat something. Um, you always want to make sure food is available every day. Um, and getting into a routine is, is uh, something that you can develop with your bearded dragon as they grow. Uh, like with Bowsy, when I started out with her, I fed her by hand because I couldn't get her to eat on her own. Uh, so what I did was I, first of all, dump her crickets down, and she went after them right away. I mean, she, she chased after them. She gulped them down like nobody's business. But if I wanted to get her to eat uh, something like her greens or her, some of her omnivore mix, I would actually uh, hand feed it to her. Uh, but basically, when it all comes down to it, you know your bearded dragon. You know their eating habits. You know what they're capable of eating. Uh, but never force feed your bearded dragon if they're not wanting to eat any more than they would normally eat on an average basis uh, just give them a chance uh, some people do have like special feeding syringes uh, that's when you know your bearded dragon needs to eat and they start looking very thin like uh, if they're malnourished you need to use one of those things in order to get the food into their system because you know they're not going to eat it on their own they probably need a little assistance uh, if there is any cause for alarm though whether your bearded dragon is in brumation or not, if you feel that your bearded dragon is in any way sick or uh, or got some kind of internal problems going on, they're not eating, uh, they just suddenly don't want to eat, but they're still awake and they're still alert, um, you know, give them a chance, let them see if they'll eat on their own, try hand feeding it to them, and if they still don't want to eat after that, uh, then your best bet is take them to the, uh, a veterinarian or somebody who can specialize in exotic pets. Uh, always keep a number of the veterinarian handy too so you know who to turn to and which number to call in case of any problems. Isn't that right, Bowsy? Huh? Yeah, what a good girl you are. For the most part, if you take good care of your bearded dragon and you notice that they're eating very well, and uh, you know they eventually will eat on their own once they get used to a routine, uh, before you start panicking and before you start wondering if there's a problem with your bearded dragon, chances are either they're in brumation and they don't eat very much, or, you know, something might be wrong internally. But always remember to check with a veterinarian first to make sure that it's nothing serious. And if it ain't nothing serious, then it's a very common brumation cycle. That's all it is. And I know Bowsy has moments like that, too. But, uh... <laughs> but uh, yeah, you never have to worry whether the bearded dragons are getting enough decent food intake during their brumation cycle because they'll eat a lot before they go into brumation and they store all of the fats that they take in from their food uh, and they store it in the base of the tail right here. But if you ever worry that bearded dragons don't get enough nutrients from their food uh, while they're in brumation or they just don't eat enough in brumation, uh, never have to worry about that because bearded dragons can sleep for three to four months on their average brumation cycle and before they go into brumation they will eat enough food to where they store the fats in the base of their tail so while they're in brumation they rely on those fats and they rely on those nutrients that they store in their tail to distribute throughout their bodies when they're in brumation when they wake up they'll they'll be ready for two things food and mating season and when they come out of brumation, you don't be surprised if your bearded dragon starts doing a lot of glass surfing, a lot of uh, a lot of running around, a lot of hyperactivity because they will get that way, and that is a sure sign that a they're in probably in mating season, b they want to get a 
you know, they want to get out of their, their terrariums and be handled by their owners or see both. But like I said, you know your bearded dragon, you know what they're capable of. So you definitely want to bear that in mind when you see your bearded dragon acting in a hyper, hypertentious tone. And always remember to always nurture, always show lots of love for your pet bearded dragon. And they will return it back to you in their own ways. I know Bowsy does. I know Bowsy does. As a matter of fact, when Bowsy shows her love, she likes to... When she crawls up, you'll notice she'll crawl up and sometimes she'll just lean her head over to my chin and start nuzzling it. And that is very unheard of in Bearded Dragons, but I, um, like I said, I worked that into a routine of hers and she absolutely adores affections. So, yeah, this is a very happy girl. And I hope that you have a happy bearded dragon. And if you follow my advice and you follow my tips, you'll have a very happy and healthy bearded dragon that will probably last a good long while. Uh, assuming that you keep its terrarium clean, keep its lights maintained, keep everything that in their life that they need to uh, maintain, give them annual checkups, look them over a lot, make sure they don't get parasites, make sure you give them their baths, mist them. And also remember too, bearded dragons, when they get their intake of water, usually they'll get their moisture from the foods they eat, but sometimes they will actually drink out of their water bowl. Bowsy does. Uh, if the bearded dragon knows where the water is, they'll usually go and they'll get the water they need. But you got to keep in mind too, these are desert creatures, so they're used to they're used to not having all that water around them all the time. Um, but when they do get thirsty. Most of them will drink on their own. Others, like I said, sometimes you need to feed them to them uh, either via syringe or when you're giving them their baths, take a moist droplet or something, drop it right on their nose and let them lick it. Or the best way, mist them. Mist them all over and then the droplets will fall, that will run down their face and they'll be able to lick it that way. But if you're ever worried that, uh, you know, your bearded dragon isn't getting enough fluids, just keep on misting them. Uh, mist them every other day, every two days. It's best to mist them every two days. And bathe them every day. That'll, that'll help keep them, uh, keep them clean of parasites and also help them with their shedding. And will help them do a number two. Because that's also what helps stimulates their ability to defecate. Uh, but all in all... Taking care of a bearded dragon isn't really all that bad. All you got to do is just bear in mind that your bearded dragon is a reflection of you. So you should be a reflection of your bearded dragon. Know exactly what your bearded dragon likes and doesn't like. And always remember, know which foods to stay away from and which foods to keep on getting. And if you follow that advice and you follow those simple rules, you'll have a very happy and healthy bearded dragon on your hands. And one that... Uh, one that I'm sure that they'll return their love to you as best as they can. But keep in mind, too, bearded dragons won't show their affections like a dog or a cat will. But they do show it in their own ways. And I know Bowsy does. Yeah, she does in many, many ways. So, all I can say right now is good luck in the, the care and raising of your bearded dragons out there. And uh, remember, if you have any questions about your bearded dragon, chances are I've either been there, I've had experience with it, or I know exactly what, what is going on with your bearded dragon. So feel free to ask away, and I'll answer any questions you have on the care of your bearded dragon. As for right now, this is Sonic Blue with Bowsy. We gotta get you to say goodbye, Bowsy, because we gotta wrap this up, and I've got Arby's. So, on behalf of Bowsy's Vlogs, this is Sonic Blue, and as soon as I can get Bowsy to turn around, being very careful to handle her, there we go. Get a good footing on. And here's Bowsy the Bearded Dragon signing off for now. Hopefully everybody will uh, take a few lessons uh, out of this that are much needed. And apply those toward the care of your Bearded Dragon to see how things go. Until next time, this is Sonic Blue with Bowsy the Bearded Dragon for Bowsy's Vlogs. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be talking about next week because I haven't really thought that deeply into Bowsy's Vlogs, but I'm sure we'll talk about something. So, for the moment, 
Best of luck on the raising of your bearded dragons and the care of your bearded dragons. And remember, you're never too far away from getting some bearded dragon advice. So, uh, like I said, if you got any questions for me, feel free to ask them and I'll answer them right away. So, Bowsie, say goodbye. Bowsie, say goodbye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Can you say bye-bye? Take care, everybody, and see you next time on Bowsie's Vlogs.